In the comments box on a previous video, I made a note that the precise uh, IF frequency isn't critical and uh, stated that the thing that matters uh, is that uh, each of the transformers are uh, tuned to the same frequency. And um, uh, that wasn't based on uh, any fact uh, that I'd ever tried before but it just seems logical to me that it, it doesn't make a great difference so I thought well I better uh, sort of put my money where my mouth is and what I've done I've mistuned uh, this radio this uh, um, GEC chassis that I've got here I've mistuned the IF uh, transformers quite deliberately uh, and instead of uh, 470 kilohertz I've got them uh, set at uh, 490 kilohertz, so 20 kilohertz adrift. And um, uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, play the radio so as you can hear it. Uh, this is just the wobulator running into the, the radio as you've seen in the previous videos. The scope is just looking at the output of the um, uh, uh, double diode triode um, AF amplifier and I'm just tuning through the band and um, I've got the, the capacitor about uh, halfway engaged. <laughs> Don't give up the day job mate. <laughs> yeah, that's one station. Got a little station there. little station there so there's there's just about five um, stations on this band that I can hear and I say that is with the uh, IF transformers deliberately uh, peaked to the wrong frequency so this is the uh, the marker frequency so I've got my signal generator at uh, 490 kilohertz and uh, so that's that central frequency there. I'm just going to change the repetition rate to see if I can uh, stop the aliasing but uh, uh, on the camera and on the scope of course I see a constant trace uh, whereas when I get it onto YouTube I get this this banding this aliasing so I'll just slow the trace down and uh, say so I don't know if that's better or worse um, and it, it's not until I upload it that I know but uh, you should be able to see quite clearly the marker trace there. Okay, I'm going to change the frequency here. And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's have a look, well, go back to the screen there. I'm going to take it up so it's moving from the peak down to there. Now I need to increase the... So that's where the marker frequency is now. Let's change the repetition rate again. Okay, and that frequency there, that is now, uh, what's that? Uh, 496 kilohertz there. Just wanted you to see where we are on the scope. Now I'm going to uh, lower the frequency of the marker just bring it down to there okay and here let's have a look I'm at uh, the 482 kilohertz okay and remember for this radio it should be 470 kilohertz and um, so as I say I've mistuned this uh, deliberately and um, it's a bit of fun actually <laughs> to see how I can pull this uh, this bell um, uh, up and down the frequency band. Something else that I've looked at that was interesting. If I pop this uh, back up on the top there, so uh, bring it back to the original start point. 
Um, you'll remember I said I didn't know whether or not I was activating the AVC. Now what I'm doing is I'm turning uh, that uh, marker signal up and I'm, I'm turning it up way too much. So all I've done is increase the amplitude but you see what it's done? It's suppressed the signal because um, the uh, automatic volume control line is kicking in and squashing the output. It, uh, it does that on, uh, it um, quenches uh, both the mixer valve and the um, uh, IF amplifier valve. Probably not doing it any good. But as I turn the marker signal voltage level down, so that it's just uh, on top of the signal there, so you see that goes back up. Just thought that was interesting. If I take the signal away altogether, turned it right down, um, you can see that is the, the natural height of that peak. Uh, so you, you mustn't overdrive it as uh, you'll get the AV, uh, AVC kicking in. So that's where it is. Okay, um, I'm going to lower the frequency, so I'll put the marker down there, and I've had to turn the uh, the signal up because as I move the marker down here so of course it's effectively an out of tune signal so I need a greater <laughs> signal driving in to actually get it to show up. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the uh, wobulator frequency on here and that'll have the effect of moving this bell across and then what I'm going to do I'm going to put the that marker frequency in the middle of the scope and now what I'm going to do is adjust the uh, the ferrite cores uh, one and then two, the other ones from the other end three and four and what I'm going to be doing is looking to move this bell over to the right so I'm just going to adjust core one then core 2 that's core 3 that's core 4 ok I just wanted to peek it on that um, so it's just so as you could see I'm going back to core 1 and I'm adjusting it for the maximum peak because I know that's been overdriven, I'm just going to turn the drive voltage down for that signal generator. I'm now adjusting core 2, core 3, I've done that one very well, and core 4. Okay, so now the peak is at uh, uh, 484 kilohertz. Um, if I make too big a change uh, in frequency, if I if I move the marker too far over, I could just lose sight of where it is. So that's why I was chasing the marker over. So I'll uh, take it up in frequency. Sorry, uh, down in frequency. Turn the uh, the out the signal generator up okay and again what I'm that is uh, uh, 477 kilohertz and I'm going to move this uh, bell over so that this marker frequency is in the center again so that's moving uh, the uh, uh, the the tuning control there. 